In certain parts of the world, you can grow orange trees. <laughs> Phoenix, Arizona, here in the United States, is one of them. But if you're new to one of these areas, and you're traveling, and you think maybe you want to pick an orange and eat it, this episode's for you, so stay tuned. Hey everybody, I'm Alan Schaefer. Welcome to Custom Garden Solutions. In this exciting episode, I'm just outside of beautiful Phoenix, Arizona. This story has a family history that I'll explain to you later in the episode. So many of you know I'm kind of new to living in Arizona, although I have family, friends, and business interests here for years. So if you're ever in Phoenix, you'll find orange trees much like you will in many parts of the world. But be warned that unsuspecting people who hope to snag a sweet snack off of one of the many orange trees may be in for a tart surprise. Some of the trees bear Seville oranges, also known as sour or bitter oranges, and it'll really shock you if you take one big bite. So how about a little background? Seville oranges are a cross between pomelos and mandarins. Seville oranges earned their name from Seville, Spain, right, makes sense, where they were introduced from Asia during the 12th century and became a symbol for the city. There are more than 14,000 bitter orange trees that line the streets of Seville, planted as urban landscape, and those trees provide greenery year-round and shade for the warm summer months. Favored for their use in marmalade, Seville oranges are used in cooking rather than fresh preparations and are predominantly exported from Spain to England to make their famous English marmalade. So how about some nutritional value? Seville oranges are a good source of vitamin C, dietary fiber, and thiamine. They also contain potassium, phosphorus, vitamin A, calcium, and antioxidant and anti-inflammatory properties. For at least a century, sour orange trees have been widely grown as ornamentals in Arizona, particularly in the Phoenix area, because they provide shade, produce fragrant blossoms, and thrive despite neglect. But just because they're tart does not mean that they're useless. So before I tell you how my family has used Seville oranges for decades, I will share with you how you might want to use them. Seville oranges are best suited for juicing and zesting as their bitter and sour flesh is unpalatable when used raw. The juice and rind are used for both sweet and savory applications, and the juice can be mixed into syrups, cocktails, vinaigrettes, aioli, sauces, marinades, and as a finishing touch on fish and white meat. The zest can be used to flavor sugar, salts, stews, cooked vegetables, and baked goods such as muffins, cakes, and bread. Seville oranges can also be used as a substitute for key limes or lemons in custards, tarts, or pies, which is how I'm gonna use it in the next episode. But the bitter rind and seeds are ideal for making candied orange peel and traditional marmalade, jams, and jellies as the seeds are high in pectin and naturally thicken preserves. Seville oranges pair well with chicken, duck, pork, beef, veal, whitefish, garlic, onion, bay leaf, cilantro, oregano, thyme, cumin, serrano peppers, strawberries, broccoli, gin, whiskey, hey, chocolate, and lemon juice. The fruits will keep up to a week or two when stored at room temperatures and two to four weeks when stored in the refrigerator. Seville oranges can also be frozen whole and stored in the freezer for up to one year. I squeeze and juice them and store them in the freezer for up to a year. Okay, so I promised a family story. My mom was a great cook. And one of her recipes is what she called Arizona pie. She took the Seville oranges, graham cracker pie crust, sweetened condensed milk, and Cool Whip and made a great sweet pie that was really good. And I'll share that with you on an upcoming episode. 
So to make Arizona pie, you have to get Seville oranges. We used to be able to get them in the backyard and pick them from the golf course, <laughs> but they cut down the trees. So last winter, my sister and I had to scout a new location, and we found one near where my Uncle Bob lives. It was so much fun for me and my sister uh, to be out sneaking around, gathering oranges like we were some kind of thieves. Uh, we felt like weirdos, but we were laughing the whole time and we were just having a great time. So my sister isn't here to share with me in the fun today, but I need to go pick some oranges so I can make some Arizona pie. So off to harvest some Seville oranges I go. Well, they played a trick on me. I went near my uncle's house where there used to be, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 um, Seville orange trees. They hacked them all down, they're all gone. So I went another block or two down and I found a bunch of Seville orange trees or bitter orange trees or sour orange trees or tart orange trees, whatever you want to call them. So I'm gonna get in there. Um, one thing I liked about my uncle's house was they didn't trim it like this and they would hang down a lot more. Here I'm gonna have to reach up there and I didn't bring any kind of tools to pull down the oranges. So let me get to it. All right, it's a pretty big box of Seville oranges or sour oranges, bitter oranges, tart oranges, whatever you want to call them. And uh, I may put a few more in here, but I'm pretty much done. So here's what these look like. This is one that is um, more like a regular orange. It's smoother, you know, about the same size. Here's one that's perfectly good, but it's very bumpy. Very, you know, it's got a very poor complexion. I think it might've ate too much chocolate as a child and maybe didn't wash his face properly. But this one is, uh, you know, another example. All right. You know, a little bit bigger than a baseball, kind of like your typical orange. And here's one that looks, you know, again, more like a, your normal orange. All right, so how's that for a close-up? So, in case you missed it earlier, if you wonder why I'm doing this, my mom had a great recipe called Arizona Pie and I'm gonna use these to make it. And I'll do an episode on that in a day or two. Um, it's a great episode, I don't cook much. You don't have to cook or bake or do anything. You kind of put everything together, put it in the fridge, a couple hours later it's ready to go. 
Um, my, I'm go going to also squeeze these and freeze them. I'm going to see my sister Kathy in a week or two, and I'm going to surprise her like a good brother and bring her some of these because she likes Arizona pie, and her son-in-law, Tyler, also likes Arizona pie, and I'm sure Kathy will surprise Tyler if I'm able to get her some of this. And um, if you're wondering, you know, I'm picking these pretty much off of public property. These are all over the place. Right here, there's, I'll try to get a picture of this. There's probably, I can see two, 10. <laughs> there's, there's 10 trees right here. And these fall to the ground and they have to have landscapers pick them up. I hope that they're at least composting these. I hope that they're not just throwing them in a landfill. So they welcomed me, actually a couple of little residents here stopped by and said, hey, take as many as you want. We're happy to have, to, to have you have them, otherwise we gotta clean them up. And one good thing that I, I read, I read that the, uh, Arizona State University, they have these all over the place. And once a year in February, it's over a three day period, third to the fifth, February third to fifth, something like that this year. But they get a bunch of volunteers out and I think it's maybe ConAgra and another company all volunteer their time and they pick um, a couple tons of these. They end up getting 400 pounds of, of juice and they make something, and I may be wrong here, but I think it's called Devil's Aid, kind of like Gatorade, but it's called Devil's Aid and they serve it in the cafeterias and the dorms and things like that. And they add agave and other sweeteners, but apparently the kids really like it. And it's just a nice way to not, you know, compost this or throw it into a landfill or leave it on the ground to rot. If you like this episode and you got anything out of it, any value at all, then you can provide some value back to Custom Garden Solutions and myself by liking it, by commenting, by subscribing, by hitting the notification bell, because that helps us with YouTube and Google. So if you like this and you got some value, you can give some value back by doing those things. I'm Alan Schaefer at Custom Garden Solutions. Our channel is all about helping you grow herbs and vegetables and oranges and all kinds of cool garden stuff so that you can live a healthier and happier life. If you're new to the channel and you want to learn all about growing herbs and vegetables and oranges and all kinds of cool garden stuff, then start today by subscribing and so you don't miss anything, hit that notification bell because you never know where I'm going to show up next. Today, I'm out picking oranges. Today, I'm out picking oranges. Easy for me to say. They're useless. They're useless. They're useless. And oranges, and oranges, and oranges. We felt like weirdos. We felt like weirdos. We felt like weirdos. <laughs>